Remember me when thou hast cause to speak. Thy name and not mine own my words shall see. Hello and welcome back to Little Talk. How are you doing this winter? I am freezing here. We are doing this textual reading of Michakatika by King Shudraka. And today we have reached the seventh act of the play. This is going to be a very short video because this act is a very short one. In fact, this is one of the shortest acts of this play. Uh, otherwise, the acts are huge. So, it won't be a long video and I would really want you to not skip anything at all. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so immediately so that you get notified every time a new video comes up. This is Monami Mukherjee. Let's begin the text. The seventh act is called Aryaka's Escape. Now, let me freshen your memory. Aryaka was the herdsman who was imprisoned by the king. A prophecy was made that Aryaka was to become the next king and of course the king was not happy about it. So Aryaka was captured. Sharvilaka, our thief who stole that golden casket from Charudatta's house, he helped Aryaka escape because they were friends. After escaping, Aryaka managed to get into a bullock cart which was standing in front of Charudatta's house. Why was that bullock cart standing? Because Charudatta wanted his servant Vardhamanaka to take Vasantasena from his house to a garden where he was waiting for her. Now Aryaka, he got a chance and he got inside that bullock cart and somehow he managed to escape. This act will show what happens after Aryaka reaches that garden inside the bullock cart and how he is received. All right. When the scene begins, we see Moitreo and Charudatta. Now, Charudatta takes Moitro everywhere. He, they are very close friends. So, Moitro is also there with Charudatta in the garden where he is waiting for his beloved. How beautiful the old garden Pushpakaranda is. You are quite right, my friend. They are in a very good mood. Especially Charudatta is in a very good mood. And he describes the garden in a very beautiful way. The trees like merchants show their wares. So it's just like the trees, they are blossoming and it's as if, you know, they are like merchants who are in a trade fair showing their wares, whatever they're going to sell. Each several tree his blossoms bears, while bees like officers are flitting to take from each what toll is fitting. So the bees are compared to tax collecting officers uh, because the bees, they move around the trees and they are compared to the tax officers. Moitra and Charudatta, they sit on a stone and Charudatta feels that Vardhamanaka is taking too long. Of course, he can't wait, you know, he is very impatient. How Vardhamanaka lingers, my friend, lingers means is delayed, is not coming on time. I told Vardhamanaka to bring Vasantasena and come as quickly as he could. Then why does he linger? So what's the problem here? Is he delayed by some slow moving load? Has he returned with broken wheel or traces? Obstructions bid him seek another road? His bullocks or himself choose these slow paces? Somehow he tries to think about all the possibilities that could have happened. Why Vardhamanaka is late? Now, right at this moment, Vardhamanaka enters with the bullock cart. We know who is inside that cart. Aryaka is. From inside the bullock cart, Aryaka is feeling a little bit apprehensive because he doesn't know what's going to happen now. And still I fear the spies that serve the king. Escape is even yet a doubtful thing. He is not sure even now that he can escape in a safe way. While to my foot these cursed fetters cling. Now when he escaped the prison, the fetters were still tied to his feet. Fetters means the iron chains uh, with which prisoners are tied up or bound up. So the fetters were still there and therefore it was quite impossible for him to escape without anybody noticing. 
because everybody would notice that he was wearing the prisoner's fetters or chains. Some good man it is within whose cart I lie, like cuckoo chicks whose heartless mothers fly and crows must rear the fledglings or they die. We all know that cuckoos, they lay eggs in crow's nest and cuckoo chicks, uh, they actually grow up motherless, uh, reared by stepmother crow. Here, he feels like he is in a place where he doesn't belong to. So, he's feeling scared like that cuckoo chick. I have come a long distance from the city. Shall I get out of the cart and seek a hiding place in the grove? So, he is now thinking about uh, what course of action he should take. Should he escape from the cart and get into hiding or should he wait and meet the owner of the cart? So, he's thinking all these things and right then they reach the part where Charudatta and Moitro are waiting for Vasanta Sena. Seeing Vardhamanaka's cart, Moitro says, Good news, my friend. It is Vardhamanaka's voice. Vasanta Sena must have come. Good news indeed. You son of a slave, what makes you so late? So Moitro wants Vardhamanaka to tell him why he is late. And Vardhamanaka says that, see, I forgot the cushion. So I went back and got the cushion for Vasanta Sena and that's why I'm late. And... Then Charudatta says, turn the cart around Vardhamanaka, Moitro, my friend, help Vasanta Sena get out. So, Charudatta is uh, really trying to make things very easy for Vasanta Sena. She should have every help she can to get down from that cart and Moitro is not very happy about it. Has she got fetters on her feet so that she can't get out by herself? Now, this is ironic uh, because the person inside the cart he really has fetters on his feet, fetters of the prisoner. Uh, but here, Moetra doesn't know that, but his words become uh, very ironic in this sense. And then he rises and leaves the curtain of the cart to look at Vasanta Sena, but there is no Vasanta Sena, and his reaction is this Why? This isn't Mistress Vasanta Sena, this is Mr. Vasanta Sena. Charudatta knows that Moetra always, you know, plays with words and he doesn't want him to crack his jokes now. A truce to your jest, my friend. Love cannot wait. I will help her to get out myself. He now gets up and Aryaka comes face to face with Charudatta here. Ah, the owner of the bullock cart. He is attractive not only to the ears of men, but also to their eyes. Ears of men means Charudatta is famous as a good person. So people have heard about him about his goodness. But not just that, he's also very handsome to look at. So you have these praises from Aryaka here. Thank heaven, I'm safe. Charudatta enters the cart and his reaction is, who is this? And then he describes the man. As trunk of elephant, his arms are long, his chest is full, his shoulders broad and strong, his great eyes restless red. Now the descriptions which he uh, gives here, they are usually associated with very royal figures. You know, kings are described in these ways, uh, using these expressions. And then he thinks, why should this man be thus enforced to fight so noble he with such ignoble plight? So if this man looks like a king, why is he you know, bound up in chains and just like a, a petty prisoner, his foot to fetters wed, wed means connected. So, why is he attached to chains? Who are you, sir? I am one who seeks your protection. Aryaka, by birth, a herdsman. Are you he whom King Palaka took from the hamlet where he lived and thrust into prison? So, everybody knows about Aryaka. Like everybody knows about why Aryaka was in prison. The same. It is fate that brings you to my sight. May I be reft of heaven's light or I desert you in your hapless plight. So from here we gather that Charudatta is not just empathizing or sympathizing with Aryaka's situation, but he also has a lot of admiration for Aryaka and he is obviously a supporter of Aryaka and he wants to help him. Then Charudatta instructs Vardhamanaka, Vardhamanaka remove the fetters from his foot and then the chains are removed. But you have bound me with yet stronger fetters of love. So yes, you have removed my chains, but by this act, you have 
bound yourself to me. So this is a kind of a bond of friendship that is growing between Aryaka and Charudatta. Moitreo, he is always there to you know, dig in with his humor. Now you may put on the fetters yourself. He is free anyway and it's time for us to be going. Peace for shame. And then Aryaka, he seeks forgiveness that he has, um, you know, got shelter into his cart without taking permission and all. And Charudatta says that, please, I'm really honored uh, that I can help you. And then Aryaka says that he wants to leave and decides to get down from the cart. But Charudatta, well, he is the master of generosity, he should be given some award for generosity, it seems. He says, no, my friend, the fetters have but this moment been removed and you will find walking difficult. So you were bound up in chains. So it's not easy for you to walk now. And in this spot where men seek pleasure, this is a garden where people go in their carts. A bullock cart will excite no suspicion. So you will have no problem in escaping if you are inside the bullock cart. Continue your journey then in the cart. And then Aryaka, of course, thanks him. And there's a lot of affectionate exchanges between them. Aryaka blesses him. Charudatta blesses him back. And then Charudatta says, Remember me when thou hast cause to speak. Thy name and not mine own, my words shall seek. So both of them, they kind of bind themselves to each other through a bond of loyalty, of faith and friendship. Once Aryaka leaves, Charudatta feels that he has acted against the king in a way, right? because he has helped a so-called traitor. And he says, from royal wrath, I now have much to fear. Now the king, if he came to know about this, he would be really angry. It were unwise for me to linger here. It won't be wise for me to stay here anymore in this garden. Then throw the fetters in the well for spies serve to their king as keen, far-seeing eyes. The spies of the king, they are like this very alert, far-seeing eyes of the king. And if the spies, they see that they are standing with these fetters, with these chains in their hands, they would understand that they have helped Aryaka. So he wants to get rid of the fetters. And then he tries to leave, but before leaving, his left eye starts twitching. Now remember in the last act I had said that in men, if the right eye twitches, it is considered to be a good omen. In women, the right eye twitching is a bad omen. But in men, if the left eye twitches, it's a bad omen. Okay, you don't have to memorize all these things because all these things are superstitious things. But just remember that something... Uh, was felt by Charudatta that something was not right because his left eye was twitching. And he says, Moitra, my friend, I long to see Vasantasena for now because I have not seen whom I love best. My left eye twitches and my breast is causeless, anxious and distressed. Causeless, anxious because he thinks that there should not be any reason to worry. So there's no cause, but he is anxious. Come, let us go. And then he notices that a Buddhist monk is coming. See, a Buddhist monk approaches and the sight bodes ill. He doesn't want to come across any witnesses right now. And maybe he has some inhibitions against Buddhist monks or something. Let him enter by that path while we depart by this. So the Buddhist monk, he enters from one side of the stage and they leave from the other. So this is how this act ends. You might think what was the whole point of putting in this act. We all know that Aryaka escaped uh, in that cart and it's obvious that Charudatta would help him in any way. But this little episode is important uh, again for two reasons. First, this bond of friendship, this kind of pact of loyalty that we find here between Charudatta and Aryaka, this has to be shown because this will again become very important in the end of the play. From a different perspective, as I was telling you, that Shudraka likes to play with the tone of the play. 
Now the previous act it was full of action and the playwright wants a kind of mellowing down of anxiety, of nervousness, of tension in the audience and at the same time prepare them for the next act which is going to be again full of action, packed with action and a lot of strange things are about to happen. So far as this act is concerned, we can say that we get to see the development of the subplot of Aryaka, the subplot which acts as a backdrop of the society in which this play was taking place, the kind of people who were there. It was not just a love story that Shudraka was painting in front of our eyes. He was painting the Indian society as he saw it. And this act, although very short, becomes instrumental in making that picture quite colorful. So that's all for today. I will really look forward to meet all of you in my next video, which is going to be on the very important Act 8 of Mirchakatika by King Shudraka. Thank you all for staying with me till now and extra thanks if you have already subscribed. So till the next video, this is Monami Mukherjee signing off. You stay subscribed, you stay healthy. Bye-bye.